Malamar is back with the Indigo Disc DLC, and it's one of the few mons with access to the insane Contrary ability. Contrary makes it so that all stat changes are reversed. Its semi-mediocre base 92 attack pairs extremely nicely with Contrary, plus the move's superpower. Instead of dropping attack and defense one stage, Malamar instead gets plus one in both. The main problem is that this squid is super slow, but there's a creative way that I've found that can fix that. I can use Sticky Web on the opponent's side of the field and immediately court change them over to my side with Cinderace. Now upon switching in, Malamar gets an immediate 1.5 times boost to speed, allowing it to outrun some big threats. But we ain't finished yet. The new DLC introduced the Stellar Terra type. While keeping your original defensive typing, this now gives you the Terra boost to each of your moves once per battle. It also makes Terra Blast super effective to opponents who are also terra no matter their type. Usually the cost of this Terra Blast is that it drops your attack stats one stage, but with Contrary, it gives Malamar another boost. This thing may not be the most meta Pokemon, and the strategy is kinda just ridiculous, but it can definitely catch people extremely off guard. Ladies and gentlemen, I have an absolutely insane showcase for you today. Malamar, ordinarily known as a pretty mid Pokemon, can absolutely pop off with a strategy like this. And if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, it only takes you a second, I promise you will not regret it. And let's go ahead and jump into the game. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Alola Ninetales. Now listen, most of the time I see this thing, I absolutely hate it. The bane of my existence, it's going to be able to set up the snow, which then allows the Aurora Veil. And then my team's not going to be able to attack its way out of a wet paper bag. But in this case, I'm actually happy to see it, and you'll see why in a moment. So, I know that this thing is faster. It is, of course, just going to go for that Aurora Veil, because that's what this thing does. And I'm able to set up my Sticky Web. So, step one of the plan is complete. They are going to be like, damn, now i got to switch into these Sticky Webs. I'm going to be all slow and caught up in these webs, and they're going to have a bad time. But, of course, I'm going to try to use those webs to my advantage. And now I need to get this spider out of here. So I figure I'm going to go for a Volt Switch. Being slower actually really helps me out here. Uh, because they're able to go first. They go for the Nasty Plot, which does make this thing extremely scary. It's fast. It now has a Nasty Plot behind both a Reflect and a Light Screen. And I've got to make some moves here. So here's what we're going to do. I can now freely switch into the Cinderace. And luckily, I am faster than Alolan Ninetales. So they're probably thinking, you know, I, I go for a Pyro Ball, able to get some decent damage, not going to do much behind the screens. However, I'm instead going to go for that court change. Not only am I going to bring the sticky webs over to my side, I also am going to straight up steal their Aurora Veil and switch everything over to my side of the field. So now I have the Aurora Veil on my side, which allows me to take a plus two Moonblast like it's nothing. And we are in a great spot because now Cinderace being faster, I can fire off a Pyro Ball, kick a flaming soccer ball at this dude's face. And they don't have the Aurora Veil up, which they still actually somehow live with like 10 HP. And they say, hey, damn, you stole my veil, so they're going to set the set their own back up again. But honestly, that is fine. If I can if I can go veil for veil, I'm totally happy with that. It is a bummer that they're able to set their own up, but I at least am going to enjoy the defensive boost on my side. So they're going to end up switching out here. I predict a switch. I'm going to end up going for the U-turn. I figure they might want that thing for later to try to get back up a veil at some point. So they go into the Hisuian Samurai here as I get the nice little U-turn pivot in this. Works out pretty nicely, because this allows me to freely bring in Squilliam Fancy Sun, the greatest squid that has ever lived, and we're about to see the absolute magic happen. So, I go into Malamar, and we're looking, we're glistening in the snow over here, and as we touch the sticky web, boom, squid is fast. The snow goes away, but both of our Aurora Veils are still going to be up, and I got to start working on the stats of this thing. So, now I'm basically free to go for a superpower. I'm actually in a pretty good position here. Uh, to get some solid damage, even with the Aurora Veil up, I can get a nice little chunk here, but most importantly, get the attack boost and a defensive boost, which does help because they do have the Seasless Edge, which actually ends up missing, which is quite amazing. I wasn't going to take much from that because with the defense boost and the Aurora Veil, however, it would set up, you know, the spikes in the whole Lego situation. But at this point, I'm now going to go straight away for that Stellar Terra. I figure if I can get the extra damage with that plus one, a superpower can knock out. Uh, the Samurott here, however, they're going to make a nice play and switch into Dragapult. This is kind of the one thing stopping me from just spamming the superpower. Of course, they have the ghost type here, but I go for that Stellar regardless, bring the power of all the damn elements like I'm the Avatar out here, and Malamar is looking pretty scary. Even with just the plus one speed attack and defense, this thing behind Aurora Veil is an issue. So, superpower, of course, goes right through the guy. And that is fine. The one problem, however, is that even with my speed boost, the Dragapult is about fast as hell. His ghostly tail over here gets going quick, and I know that I'm going to have to take an attack. However, I can then predict them to go for the Terra. I figure they're probably scared of something like a Night Slash, or just a stab dark move. 
from the Malamar here, and they do commit the Steel Terra. So, this thing puts the axe on its head, and behind the Aurora Veil, plus, if this thing is a physical Dragapult, I can take an attack all day here. So, they're gonna actually end up going for that Dragon Darts, and with my defense boost, with Aurora Veil, I'm able to absolutely laugh off the damage, and then I can fire off the super effective Terra Blast, and even though they have the Aurora Veil up, we're gonna be able to get a nice chunk with that, with the super effective damage. And that's going to do over half. So I then get my attack boost from that Terror Blast that usually drops us. And we are out here ready. Even with some leftovers, I'm nearly at full. And Malamar has never been such an absolute beast, I swear to God. So my Roar Veil does unfortunately wear off. Now, theirs is going to stick around because they had the Light Clay on the, the Ninetales. Whereas my side doesn't, so I got the five turns. However, I can still take a nice little Dragon Darts easily as hell. And then I can just start blasting the shit out of this thing with a superpower, which obviously grabs the kill now that it's steel type. Plus, I get another attack boost and an important defense boost. So, Malamar's out here boosted up like I grabbed some pills from the gas station, and down goes their fastest mon along with the Terra. So, it's really good news that they did have to commit the Terra there, and we love to see the Dragapult gone. So, I got myself a nice little bite of the apple. I'm sitting at around half health and all sorts of defense out here. So, as they decide to go into the Cleaver, I know that I'm going to be faster than this thing. However, they do still have two turns of the Aurora Veil. So what I decide to do here is go for the Psycho Cut, both for the crit chance, but also because I haven't used the Stellar Terror Boost on this move yet. It does do just over half. Sadly, it does bring them to the Citrus Berry range, has a nice little snack time on the battlefield, and like the fat as the Cleaver is. And then he is able to fire off a Stone Axe. But with my Defense Boost, Squillium is able to eat that axe to the face. And we are not having Calamari today, baby. So, we are now down to one final turn of their Aurora Veil. And that's the only thing stopping this Malamar from dishing out insane damage. So, what I'm going to do here is go for another superpower. It's kind of just my best bet at this point. I know that with that Veil up, I'm not going to be able to do too much damage and be able to knock it out. But with the superpower, at least I can boost my defense to give me a chance to live an attack depending on kind of what their coverage is on this thing. So I go for that superpower, get some solid chip. They go for the aerial ace and I'm able to live it with three HP, which is absolutely nuts. That last defense boost allowed us to live that. Thank God they didn't go for something like the X scissor, um, but the sharpness boosted uh, aerial ace is not quite gonna be enough. And now the Aurora Veil is gone. So listen, the squid is about to run wild. I'm faster than everything. I have crazy damage and they decide to save the cleaver for later. So they're gonna actually end up bringing in Scizor here, they're thinking, hey, I'm steel, kinda defensive, I go for the superpower and absolutely bop this bitch to the next dimension and down goes the Scizor. Um, and that's a yeah, big threat out of the way because it has the potential to be running, you know, bullet punch to get that priority damage. However, now I don't have to deal with it, which is great because honestly, my team in the back does not really enjoy the Scizor regardless. So that thing being gone is amazing. Malamar's out here just stirring the damn pot and now they get a free switch into the Samurott here. So, bad news is, a lot of the time Samurott does carry priority in the form of Sucker Punch, and he does have that Sucker Punch just barely enough to be able to knock out the Malamar, and down we go. But not before we were able to absolutely do some damage to the team, and really kind of open up the late game for me here. So, we find ourselves in a spot where now I have the Sticky Web on my own side, and you're thinking, damn, now that's gonna be unfortunate. However, you would be incorrect because now I can actually go into the Sceptile. And what Sceptile does is, he comes in, touches the Sticky Web, gets the speed drop, makes me slower than like everything, which is horrible news. But instead, this Sceptile is actually built for this team and he's prepared for them Sticky Webs because the speed drop is actually gonna activate my White Herb. It's gonna bring my stats back to normal, but more importantly, it's gonna activate my Unburden ability, which now doubles my speed and makes me the fastest Mon on either side of the field. So they actually go for the Sucker Punch just to get some chip damage here. I can then Leaf Blade to take care of the Samurott. And the Unburdened Sceptile is actually positioned super well for the late game here because they decide to go into the Glade. Now I'm thinking this is probably something like a Choice Scarf Glade, but with my speed doubled, I outspeed that. And I actually also have the Acrobatics, which is boosted because I used up my item. Paired with the Unburdened, it's kind of just perfect synergy with the super effective damage. Don't even need a Swords Dance. Gonna take care of that Glade. And now they are running out of options. In comes the Ninetales, who is not going to be able to go fast enough. And I did have enough chip on this thing to where an Acrobatics is going to take care of it. So down goes the annoying-ass Ninetales. Just comes in to make it snow and be annoying for one last turn here. And this may be one of like the best examples of a game showing how your own Sticky Web can really come in clutch for you, which is probably something that's not said super often. So last Mon is the Cleaver. This thing does definitely just die to an Acrobatics. However, they are going to, in fact, run from the game, 
and that is going to be the end of it. So I thought that was a super fun showcase match to kind of so you can you can definitely think outside the box a lot of the time with Pokemon's abilities and some interesting moves. So thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support on these videos. You guys have been absolutely amazing lately. I read every single comment. Make sure to leave a comment if you did enjoy, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.